Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about diffusion once again in this video. Diffusion in the home studio. So maybe you're thinking about buying some diffusion. Maybe you've got some diffusers already in your studio. Or you're taking some measurements with Room EQ Wizard, and you're wondering, how do I actually figure out what they're doing? Can I actually see that in the measurements? Is there a way to figure out what they are doing. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. But first, if you're in the process of treating your home studio and you're wondering what the next step for you needs to be, I want you to download my home studio treatment framework for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to systematically treating a room and getting it to translate. This is basically the process that I follow when I treat a studio and that I teach my students in order for them to really take the steps that you need in treating your, your home studio in the right order. Because depending on how you approach the treatment, so there are certain things that you want to do first and make sure you get the most out of before moving on to the next thing. And so this is why I created the home studio treatment framework to give you a top level perspective of all the steps that you need to take in order to get to a system, a sound system, a room that really translates where you can really rely on your speakers and get back to actually working on the music without thinking about sound. So again, if you're in that state, if you're thinking about treating your studio, if you are in the process and you need to figure out what the next step for you is, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework and go through those steps in order to figure out what you actually need to do next. But with that, let's get back to this question. Can you actually measure diffusion in a home studio? The short answer is not really, unfortunately. At least it's very, very difficult. And the problem is that diffusers are made to break up specular reflections. So what does that mean? Well, specular reflections are kind of direct reflections coming off of a flat surface. Yeah, it's like playing pool, it's like playing billiards. You've kind of got that that sound hitting the wall and then coming back in exactly the same way. And if you put a diffuser there, you can actually break up that energy and spread it over a larger area, reducing the energy in that one reflection over a whole bunch of different reflections that all spread out in different, in different directions. Now, the problem is that you can't really differentiate this process in measurements from just absorption because all you're really seeing is a certain peak a certain reflection just kind of disappearing, if you will. So you can't really see that happening in the frequency response, for example, at least you can't differentiate it from absorption. The other thing is a common misconception about diffusion is that it does not lengthen the decay time of the room in any way. And in fact, diffusers actually also absorb sound. And so you can't really see the effect of diffusion, for example, on the reverb time or in a waterfall plot, because it just doesn't appear in any way that kind of says, here's a particular frequency range that the diffuser works in. And now suddenly we're getting a longer decay time in that frequency range. It doesn't work that way. In fact, again, it absorbs sound. So what you'll actually see is a reduction in reverb time, or at least a kind of steepening of the waterfall plot. Now, the one way to look at the data in, for example, Room EQ Wizard and see what diffusion does is by looking at the impulse response, right? Remember, this is when you're basically just measuring how the room decays over time by just playing a short impulse, a loud bang, from, for example, from the location of the speaker. And then you just measure at the listening position how the sound bounces around the room and how that bang actually, or when that bang returns back to the microphone, right? And you end up with something that looks like this over here on the left. This is just a measurement that I took in an empty room some at some point. So what you're seeing here is basically volume kind of on the vertical axis. And then as time passes towards the right on the x-axis, you can see how the, the, the energy slowly decays because as those reflections, that loud bang takes longer to travel around the room, it becomes quieter, and so you get this kind of even decay. Although this is in an untreated room, and so you, you don't really see that much. But let me just pull up a, another impulse response from 
Northward Acoustics. You've heard me talk about Northward Acoustics a lot. So here's a an image from one of the on the job kind of folders on the website. And what we're going to look at is this one here, which is basically uh, framed or set in exactly the same way to mine on the left, right? So the big difference is obviously this is in a treated room. And what I want you to pay attention to is how these peaks on the left, right? For example, right here, yeah, or these ones here or this over here, how they now get reduced and broadened out, right? So you get this, this effect of this one reflection that has all the energy breaking up into multiple reflections with less energy. And that's kind of the effect of the fusion as far as we can see it in measurements. Ideally, what that leads to is a decay in this impulse response that has a number of dense reflections that are very close together that are but they are they're evenly spread out they're evenly distributed over time right and so you get a much more even decay without all these little peaks poking out and actually well coloring the sound right this is this is what really causes coloration in the speakers and also confusion in the stereo image and so on but so then how do you actually properly measure diffusion well to be frank, it's actually so difficult that I'm not even going to attempt to explain it properly here because it's just going to make this video extremely long and you probably won't understand what I'm saying anyway. And also because there are different types of measuring diffusion to kind of obtain different types of data depending on what you actually want to use in your design process. But in a nutshell, you basically have a, a system where you get the diffusing surface, and I took this Im image from uh, Acoustic Absorbers and Diffusers by uh, Trevor Cox and Peter D'Antonio. Um, you basically put the diffusing surface in an anechoic chamber because you don't want any other types of reflections coming back to the microphone apart from the surface, the kind of object that you're testing. And then you play a signal and you record the response in a microphone. And then you kind of move this microphone around the diffusing surface, surface in two dimensions, ideally, and you get something called a polar plot that shows you how the energy, that energy is broken up and redirected in all the different directions. And then you can reduce that or convert that information into two basic numbers that tend to be used to define diffusion and how well it works on one side the scattering coefficient and on the other side the diffusion coefficient and they're somewhat similar but here's basically how they're defined in um by by cox and antonio so the scattering coefficient s is a ratio of energy scattered in a non-specular manner to the total reflected energy and then the diffusion coefficient d is a measure of the uniformity of the reflected sound, right? So that's how you actually define diffusion properly. And as you can probably tell already, it's not particularly useful for us in the home studio. So then what does that mean for us in the home studio? Well, first of all, I don't think it's worth bothering to try and kind of identify diffusion in your Room EQ wizard measurements if that's what you're trying to do. If anything, what you'll probably see is the reduction or the breaking up of these peaks in the impulse response. But again, this also sort of happens with absorption, so it can be difficult to differentiate between the two. Mainly also just remember that diffusion really is the wrong tool for the job of treating a home studio. It's, it basically works like a very poor band-limited absorber that uses up a lot of space and is very expensive. It's just not the right tool for the job in a home studio. You really want to just stick to absorption. And if anything, if you want to look at diffusion, look at binary amplitude diffusers, right? So these are the, the typical wood slats that you see on my absorber panels. They also come in, in kind of panels with these holes in them, and they're sometimes called scatter plates or scatter faces. And they basically diffuse or scatter energy in the high frequency range, sort of usually somewhere between two and seven kilohertz. And the whole purpose of these is simply to give the user, you, a sense of space, 
Yeah, this isn't about somehow controlling certain reflections. This is simply about how you shape the sound in the space while you're in it. So that's really the gist of it when it comes to measuring diffusion in a home studio. I know this isn't a particularly satisfying answer, but diffusers are tricky tools to use and they're really kind of, their point really is left to the use or the, the, the use case of larger spaces where you can really make the most use of this particular tool in the context of what you're trying to do with the space. So with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. That's what it's all about. I'll see you in the next video.